Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mary Connect, and I'm on the leadership team of Women for Kansas. We, along with the League of Women Voters, Wichita Metro, are delighted that you are interested in the future of Wichita and in this forum. Next Tuesday is a primary election, and you will be voting for two of these candidates. However, advanced voting is already underway, either by requested ballot or at the election commissioner's office from 8 to 5 tomorrow through the rest of this week, and then on Monday, the day before the election, just from 8 until noon. So now, let us welcome our moderator for tonight's forum, Susan Peters from Cake Television. Thank you so much, Mary. Uh, we appreciate you all being here. We've almost got a full house here on the bottom floor at the Scottish Rite Temple, and we want to welcome everyone who is watching on cake.com. Welcome to the forum. Uh, a little bit about the sponsors of the forum first. Uh, women for Kansas is, uh, the mission of Women for Kansas is to unite and activate women across the state for the purpose of electing officials who value fair taxation and fiscal responsibility, a strong public education system, a balanced court system, an open electoral process, and equal opportunities for all. Women for Kansas. And the League of Women Voters, Wichita Metro, also a sponsor of tonight's debate. A nonpartisan organization that encourages informed and active participation of all citizens in government and influences public policy through education and advocacy. The League does not support or oppose any political party or candidate. Before I introduce the candidates, I want you to remind you all to please put away your cell phones and your cameras, they're not allowed. And according to league guidelines, candidate forms cannot be taped or broadcast without the permission of the league. No portion of the candidate forum may be used as campaign material as well. The format of the session. The session will present candidates for the mayor of Wichita. And as you can see, there are 10 of them, and we are in cozy quarters here up on stage. Uh, the term for mayor, as you know, is four years. It is a full-time position. The salary is $84,000. Let me introduce the candidates. Robert Culver, in alphabetical order, by the way. Sean Hatfield, Dan Heflin, Francis Jackson. Jeff Longwell, Tony Rosales, Tracy Stewart, Levanto Williams, Sam Williams, and Jennifer Wynn. Now candidates in, well, in order to ensure that we have the most time for all of our candidates running to represent you, we have established a format. We've got uh, time and terms for the forum, all candidates by the way, have agreed in advance to the following format. Now, to begin, each candidate will have up to a minute for opening remarks. After that, they will respond to questions that have been prepared by the sponsors of tonight's forum. At the conclusion of questioning, each candidate will have two minutes for closing remarks. All candidate remarks will be timed, by the way, to ensure equal opportunity for everyone. Our timekeepers are Carol Neal and Connie Dean. They are members of the League. And candidates, they are, they're going to raise signs to let you know how much time is left. 
please stop when she holds up the stop sign. There are three different signs. One says one minute, one says 30 seconds, oh, you, even though you can't see that it says 30 seconds, you know the yellow means 30 seconds. And then there's the stop sign. <laughs> there you go. Um, and audience, when you entered, you were given little uh, cards for, to fill out if you have questions of your own for the candidates. As you listen to the candidates, you may write down some additional questions. We already have a lot from the audience, but you may write down additional questions. And questions will be screened for appropriateness and grouped by topic. And if we have time, which I hope we will, at the end of the forum or as the forum winds down, we will read some of the questions from the audience. The candidates, as I mentioned, seated alphabetically, left to right, in order of which they will give their opening remarks. Each candidate will have one minute for opening remarks. And the name of the first candidate, Robert Coulter. Hello. I'm Robert Coulter out of Seabass, Texas, for over 17 years. I'm, I'm, let me yeah, see if that microphone's on. Yes, it says on. It says on? Why, why don't you hand them that one? Yeah, there you go. Thank you. Hello. I'm yes. Robert Culver. I'm a sheet metal specialist at Tennyson Brothers for over 17 years. I just want you people to know that there's going to be some stuff coming out in the paper about me either tomorrow or the next day. I do regret some of the stuff that I did when I was younger. I've been accused of stuff that I didn't do. Um, but I don't think that makes me unable to run this city. That makes me a truly honest, accountable, transparent mayor. If you look, vote for me on March 3rd, you, that's what you will get. I will not hide anything from anybody. I will answer any questions you have about my background. If you read about it, see me on the street. I am not proud of some of my stuff I did, but of course I was a child at the time. And sometimes we get in trouble for things. But that's not the point here. The point is, we, it's time to have a true, honest mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Culver. Next candidate, Sean Hatfield. Thank you, my name is Sean Hatfield. Uh, and thank you to the League of Women Voters and for Women of Kansas for hosting this event tonight. This is really what retail politics is all about. And I am privileged to speak with you here tonight. But more importantly, it is my honor to listen to you, to listen to the issues that are important to you and to your family and to this community. Wichita's future, my friends, is very bright indeed, but we need new leadership. We need a fresh perspective from a serious young professional to take charge at City Hall and start changing the culture and the way of thinking at City Hall to start moving Wichita forward I'm looking forward to your support. I'm asking for your vote on March 3rd, and thank you tonight for having us. Thank you, Mr. Hatfield. Next candidate, Don Heflin. Dan Heflin. Thanks. I am Dan Heflin. I am a design engineer by trade. I uh, used to work at Cessna until the downturn. I uh, grew up in Pratt, not far away from here. It was a small town atmosphere. And I've always loved the fact that when we come from western Kansas, we wave to each other, at least keep waving to each other when we're here in Wichita. I've been here about 33 years, and I've grown to love this town as if it were the town that I was born in. And I love it so much that I want to bring a set of skills that I've gained as a design engineer to tackle the challenges that we face in our future with water, streets, infrastructure. And I really have a passion for our communities and our neighborhoods. And I want to make sure that this, those streets get paid attention to too, because that is where we live and where the focus is. I mean, I think the downtown will probably take care of itself in the, in the long run, but we got to focus on the downtown first. Thank you, Mr. Heffern. It's difficult to stand up because you're this really close together. So I'm going to remain. Let, let me introduce also. you first. Our All next right. candidate is Francis Jackson. <laughs> Thank you. Um, one of the reasons I'm running is because of the comment a dear friend of mine made when she was running for office. And she said, Miss Frank, every other house I go to, people say they're not voting. 
And so I was saying to her, I said, why do you suppose that is? She says, I don't know. I said, well, we better run for office and figure it out. <laughs> and so one of the things that makes it real for me is that when I was rearing my kids, I, I really tried to think about what are the things that are important to them that will make them sort of aware of how it is that this community comes together. So I looked at 4-H and extension. I looked at the youth groups and we participated. And we participated in Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and you name the list. And not only did they participate, but I did too. And on that journey, I learned so much about how it is that groups can be so organic and they can be uh, uh, manipulated in ways that sometimes produces uh, less than wonderful results. And sometimes they are, uh, you can be in those groups and you just can't even imagine how wonderful the outcomes can be. So I'm here because I'm looking for a more inspirational, innovative way to get people to, to um, be involved for the common good. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Our next candidate, Jeff Longwell. I'm gonna stand up so the people who are on the left side over here can see me, and besides, Susan has an opportunity to make me look better if I stand next to her. <laughs> I, I do want to introduce my wife of 34 years, Susie, that's sitting out there in the audience. She's certainly the best part of me. My mother, again, joined us, and I uh, hope we don't have too many more of these forums because I think Fran's winning my mother over. Thank goodness my mother still loves me a lot. Um, very charming. My brother and his wife came, and I know I saw one of my former colleagues walk into the room. We have former city council person Sharon Fury here tonight. And so, great crowd. She, she does deserve applause. Great crowd. I want to bring my, I want to bring my experience, vision, and leadership uh, to the office of mayor. I've spent 12 years on the local school board eight years on city council. I've been part of a team that has had to govern during some of the toughest recessionary times. We have balanced the budget every year. We have over $25 million in emergency reserves. We have fixed streets that needed fixed. We built a bridge over the big ditch and we haven't raised your taxes. Thank you, Mr. Longwell. Our next candidate is Tony Rosales. I'm gonna stand up as well so I can see everybody over here. Hey there, my name is Tony Rosales. Um, I'm 39 years old. Um, I gotta get used to saying that because my birthday was yesterday. So, um, for those of you who said I was too young, well, I'm a, I'm a year older now, so that helps. Um, but you know, um, here's what I believe in. I believe in the people of Wichita. I believe in the people of this great city. I believe there's a lot of people in our community that can help this community grow and get better. And that's what I want to do too. I want to help it grow and get better. Um, you know, I always tell people that my vision for Wichita is a big city atmosphere with small town values. We have the small town values down pat. We do. Um, but I want to see our atmosphere grow into that of a big city. You know, we're the 49th biggest city in the, in the United States, uh, but we're nowhere near where we need to be that in, in far as atmosphere goes. Um, so thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Rosales. Our next candidate, Tracy Stewart. Thank you, and thank you to the League of Women Voters and Women for Kansas uh, for organizing this and inviting all of us here tonight. I want to start by saying that I voted against the sales tax uh, proposal last fall. The reason is the way it was bundled together. The water would have passed, the transportation would have passed, most likely, but the jobs portion of that incentive or that proposal, I think, killed the whole thing. Our city in the past has made lots of mistakes with the job incentives, job creation incentives that they hand out to certain companies or certain industries. And I don't think that we can trust our government, our city government at this point, to have more money to use for job creation incentives. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Our next candidate is Levanta Williams. Thank you. My name is Levanta Williams and I am married. I have my own Billy D. Williams and we've been there for 43 years. <laughs> we have two grown sons and uh, three grandkids. Uh, one was a Jayhawk and one was a Shocker. So we've got, we've got the best. Um, people ask, why am I running for mayor? I, I'm running for the next generation. That's why I'm running. I'm running because I was born and raised in Wichita, and I've seen us go through various stages of growth and economic stress. 
through my 35 years of teaching career, all middle school, and six years on the council, I have lived the position of a public servant. I am a committed person, I'm committed to Wichita, and I have the energy and experience to lead us to the next stage. Now some of you may say, what is the next stage? For me, the next stage is the next generation. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Our next candidate, Sam Williams. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great privilege for me to be here with you tonight. Thank you for putting this forum on. I'm running for mayor because I understand the potential of Wichita, Kansas. I understand the great and wonderful city this is and the great and wonderful future that we have together as we serve one another to strengthen the community. Um, I don't have a list of things I've done in the past that is uh, a witness to you that I can do things with your money. But what I can do to you is show that I can do things to create jobs so that we can have the revenue we need to be able to create a beautiful place to live. We lost 30,000 jobs in the last 10 years in Wichita, Kansas. My biggest responsibility is to help our city diversify its economy finally, to provide the leadership so that we can do that, so that we will provide the place where our children will stay, our grandchildren will stay, and our great-grandchildren will stay and people will come back. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Our last candidate is Jennifer Wynn. Thank you all for coming out, and this microphone works really well. <laughs> um, so I wanna, I wanna let you know that I am just a common, average, everyday taxpayer, just like you. Uh, there are some that would even go as far to say that I'm a loose cannon and I can't be controlled. And quite honestly, folks, that's what we need. The only difference is, is I'm not really a loose cannon. I'm, I'm, I'm very directed, I'm a very good aim, and I'm looking to expose and make things transparent in our government that has been exempt from things like Kansas Open Records Act requests. I want accountability, I want job creation, and I want, a, I want an economic plan that, that brings the jobs back, keeps our youth here, and I want, our, I want to see our city come back to life. And I think that if we start to expose the, the money that has been basically taken from our knowledge, used without our knowledge, I think that we will find ways to put money back into our actual city and create an environment for the future. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. We now get to the question and answer portion of our forum tonight. The first question, all the candidates will answer, and then we will have a list of questions that only one candidate will answer at each time. They have been prepared, by the way, these questions, by the League of Women Voters, Wichita Metro, and of course, Women for Kansas, the two sponsors of this forum. Now, due to the number of candidates, obviously we have 10, all candidates will answer the first question, as I said, then we will randomly select questions to be answered by individuals, uh, candidates, at random. Uh, we're gonna try to cover as many questions as possible and give each candidate equal time, of course, for each question. We will include questions submitted by you, the audience, uh, pending time at the end of the forum. The first question is a question every candidate will answer. And the question is, what strengths do you see that the city of Wichita has and what is your vision for the future of Wichita? We're gonna start once again in alphabetical order. The first candidate, Robert Colbert. Thank you. <laughs> we need to pass that microphone down. <laughs> okay, somebody heard I was the wild card. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much. The strengths of the city is our young. Our young professionals is what makes this city run and grow. It's not us older generation anymore. Those problems are that we're losing our young to other industries and other cities. Our strength is this, we need to keep them here. The stronger we become, the greater we become. I know that sounds like a cliche, but that's how it works. Um, the, my vision is a better, stronger 
Wichita. A better communication between citizen and, pub, and citizens and the city of Wichita. Better communication between the police and citizens of Wichita. And honestly, a mayor that's going to thank you. I, I probably forgot to say this is probably my fault. I think they get two minutes for the first question. So you may continue, Mr. Culver. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My vision for this city is making it greater. Bringing in better industries. The problem with this, with our city, is that we have this potential of turning down companies that could have put our young professionals to work. We lost our air, we lost Boeing to Oklahoma because our city refused to match the incentive that Oklahoma was going to give them to go to Oklahoma. Why? Was they trying to save money? No, they weren't. We need to stop giving money to families that burn their buildings down and want to rebuild or do a facelift on the building. The only way to do that is to actually put somebody in office that's going to say no and put a stop to it. Bringing more water to Wichita. We don't have to go out. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Culver. Next candidate to answer the first question is Sean Hatfield. Thank you. Well, I'm bullish on Wichita and, and Wichita's future. Wichita's greatest attribute is Wichita. It's our community. There's no doubt about it. We have a number of problems that we're going to have to face and the next mayor is going to have to tackle. Uh, but the best way to do that, our best tools are right here in Wichita. We have the best minds to, to put towards these problems. We have Wichita State. We have friends, we have Newman, we have young entrepreneurs, we have business leaders who can all come together as a community to solve our problems. It will take, though, new leadership at City Hall and a change of culture to really get that done. Wichita's strength lies in young professionals and young entrepreneurs. We want to bring in new jobs to Wichita. We need to bring in young, innovative companies, not with handouts, but with promoting Wichita's quality of life, which is great. We just have to sell it. Thank you, Mr. Hatfield. Dan Hatlin. Wichita's greatest asset is our people. We have some of the best workers, the most creative uh, builders. Our aviation industry is top-notch, world's best. When I was working out Cessna, we built more business jets than the rest of the industry combined. And that doesn't happen with just anybody. It happens with people that have the dedication and skills to create and, and develop. And we are gonna build a better city because those people are still here, ready to go, most of them. A few of my friends had to leave because of the layoff. But I'll bring them back because we're gonna have a city that's gonna have the uh, inventiveness to create new work, new jobs, and like Robert said, you know, get our young people involved, and we're going to have the mentors from our skills that we, the older people, have used to create those new jobs. And the aviation, this uh, piece that I was in, in the beginning of the development, is partnered with the new uh, in innovation campus that uh, Wichita State is building. Will all combine to be this new creative force that our city really needs to get to get better and become the greatest city, one of the greatest cities in our country. And I believe that that is possible. And I believe that because of I believe in our people and our dedication to each other. Because we are probably one of the friendliest cities. We've never won that award before, but I think we should. Because we are the friendliest city in town. We're the people that wave to each other when we go past each other. So I think that we should just from there go to our people, and we can have a great town. Thank you. Our next candidate, Francis Jackson. For me, the biggest asset of Wichita, Kansas are the families by every definition. They are incredible. I, it's just, you have to live a little block to understand the significance 
of how people make a life and how they develop in ways that bring comfort and, and develop the ideas that they're concerned for one another and then their concern for what I call and what Martin Luther King called the beloved community. In this beloved community, we have some exciting things going on. And I don't know how young you have to be to understand that. And I know every time you read something about me, they say my age first because I guess that's <coughs> easy to report. But I'm telling you, if you understand the innovations that are going on in Wichita now and how it, it helps us to take this new journey toward those things that give everybody in our community the chance to feel and think and believe that they can do those things that make their life wonderful. Now, sometimes we get caught up and we begin to think, well, somebody's got more or somebody has less or somebody needs something that I'm not willing to give. But I think with this whole idea of the innovation coming with Wichita State and also in other educational entities that we have, I think we're beginning to look at all those things that help make us um, uh, operate in our individual families. And I'm looking forward to being in some of those sessions that we recreate in ways that then begin to help us feel like those of us who live here want to stay here. And so therefore, if we're going to uh, take taxes for those who stay here, we want to make sure that we use that money in ways that gives us the feeling that we're inspired to do more, not just for ourselves and our families, but for each other. Jeff Longwell. Thank you. Um, some of our greatest assets, we are an affordable city with affordable housing. We have some of the friendliest people uh, that you can imagine anywhere. I agree that we care about others. We want to take care of our neighbors. And we hear it all the time. We're a great place to raise a family. We have the good fortune of having McConnell Air Force Base here that brings visitors from all over the country. And you can find in many neighborhoods today people that have came here because of McConnell Air Force Base and they decided to retire here because Wichita turned into their favorite city. So we have a lot to offer. We need to communicate that certainly more often. We certainly need to work on our quality of life and escalate that to take advantage of many more opportunities. We need to diversify our tax base. We need to get back to innovation and that entrepreneurial spirit that really set Wichita aside from most other Midwestern cities early on. And we've lost some of that. I want to help bring some of that back. We have WSU that has set forth a vision with an innovation campus that they just had a ribbon cutting last night. We have a new uh, blueprint for regional economic growth that should get us excited about diversifying our economy. And then we need to take care of those uh, quality of life opportunities that matter in people's everyday lives. And I have a track record of pushing the envelope so that we can put those things back where they need to be and pay for them out of the general fund budget without raising taxes and elevate Wichita again. Thank you, Mr. Longwell. Once again, two minutes to answer the question. What strengths do you see that the city of Wichita has, and what is your vision for the future of Wichita? Uh, well, my opening remarks already stated my vision. It's, you know, big city atmosphere, small town values. Um, and like I said, the, that's, the small town values, those core values that we have are our best attribute. That's what we have. That's, we're great with that. But we do need to become, you know, a city with a great atmosphere. What, what can a big city atmosphere bring? It can bring tourism, it can bring new jobs, it can bring uh, you know, new development of things. You know, the innovation campus at WSU is a great thing, but more importantly, when people graduate out of that program, we want them to stay here. We want them to say, hey, here is where you need to be to start your business. Here is where you need to be to raise your family. Um, and you know, the quality of life issues, if you, issues that we have, they're good, but they can get better. We can do the things that, that make the quality of life here in Wichita better. And I think if we grow into a city with a big atmosphere um, and stick to our core values, those are things that um, will attract people to Wichita, not only for their business, but for their life in general. Um, you know, everybody talks about the Fair Fares program. Um, and one reason why we have the Fair Fares program is because we're not really a destination city, you know, but we need to be. 
And if we have, if we are a destination city, then maybe those things like the fair fares program can go away. You know, and we wouldn't have to pay $1.75 million a year for that. Um, so bringing Wichita into the forefront as a big city um, is one thing that we will need to do in the future to make sure that uh, we make Wichita grow to where it needs to be. Thank you. Next candidate, Tracy Stewart. I think Wichita's greatest strength lies in its people. All of us, all of us here tonight, all, everybody at home, our, our families and our neighbors, our neighborhoods, um, some of our neighborhoods need some work. <clears throat> and, and we need to focus on, on improving some of those things as well. But our greatest strength has to be in our people, the way we treat each other, the way we care about each other, and the way we want to help everybody uh, succeed. My vision for the future of Wichita is, is some excitement. We need to bring in some excitement and, and a little bit of big city atmosphere, make it more exciting to go outside and be part of the community than to sit home and watch TV. I think we do that by uh, allowing for small businesses and entrepreneurs the opportunity to take a risk, make it easier for them to start their business, make it easier for them to follow their dreams, and cut the red tape, cut, cut the regulations that are hindering small business growth in our community. We also need to focus on uh, housing, uh, first-time home buyers need some help, people relocating into our city, uh, maybe need a little bit of assistance in, in finding out all the great things about our city. So we need to focus on bringing more people into our community and continuing to make it better. Thank you. Thank you. Next candidate is Levanta Williams. Thank you. I think that right now Wichita has a rich entrepreneurial history. We need to build upon this by providing the resources that are needed and the mentoring of the good ideas that are coming from our young people. Local businesses need to hire the young people that we have and that have been trained in our community in order to keep our educational dollars at work here in Wichita. As I stated, my vision is to look at that young, uh, that young millennial person. One of the things that I think we as a city have not done is reached out to that group of young people. We cannot keep deciding what is needed in our city for a certain age if we're not having that age at the table. That for me is very important. I definitely agree with the Wichita State Innovation Campus. In seeing that yesterday, it's just a, a, a field that is full of dreams for me. Uh, as you look at the hotels and everything that Dr. Bardo is proposing there, that is going to produce the type of people that we need to stay here. If we train our young people the correct way, businesses will come to us. But we've got to make sure that we are inspiring them, that we are encouraging them, and that we are keeping them here. As I talked to a group of students the other day at Wichita State, not everybody raised their hand to say they were going to stay in Wichita. But I did want to know who was not staying, and I want to know why they're not staying. So we've got to invest, and we've got to invest starting at a younger age than the colleges. Wichita State, uh, Friends, at uh, Newman. We've got to start by partnering with USD 259 and the regional school districts around us. We have got to start investing at an earlier age than Wichita is if we're going to have the workforce that is needed for tomorrow. That education background tells me that we need to have those connections. And that is one of the things that I've already talked with the city manager about, millennial and the next generation. Thank you. Sam Williams. Um, well, I can't go home tonight without saying that the best asset and the best thing we have in Wichita is my wife sitting down there in the <laughs> audience. And uh, my son, one of my sons is here tonight. We have four of our children who live here. The biggest thing, the best thing we have in Wichita, Kansas is our potential. We are uh, at a stage where we can become and we can improve on every single bit of our, our community. We have the potential of our young people. We have the potential of a university that's reigniting. We have the potential of an aviation industry that is the, cap the air capital of the world. Every airplane flying today has a part on it from Wichita, Kansas. We have the potential of an entrepreneur uh, real 
an entrepreneurial history of which that wealth that was created during those times is still here in our community. My vision is to release that potential, to realize that potential. And I see us realizing that potential by allowing our atmosphere, the, the environment we have in Wichita, Kansas, to allow small business to be created at record rates. That we are a regulatory environment and we are a tax environment that is a magnet for small business to to create jobs here in Wichita. 90 plus percent of all jobs that are created come from businesses with 10 employees or less. I see that potential being realized by enabling our legacy companies to stay here in Wichita and to continue to be the air capital of the world by meeting their needs. I see that potential being released, being realized by creating an entrepreneurial environment where the entrepreneurial wealth that we have in this community is reinvested in new companies and young people who are creating their businesses and we, play, we provide the place for them to incubate and to accelerate and then to stay here and to add employees and to grow. The next Pizza Hut, the next Rena Center, the next Cessna, the next, Bomba, the next Bombardier, growing right here in our community as we realize that potential. Thank you. And lastly, Jennifer Wynn. Well, for me, I'm born and raised in Wichita, so I look at Wichita as having the best people. In fact, I'm going to tell you a little story that most people probably wouldn't tell you. But just before this started, I had a wardrobe malfunction. <laughs> and I had a zipper that broke. And I went up to a woman, and I won't call her out by name, but simply said, can you help me? <laughs> and guess what? She did. As I've been helped when I broke down with a flat tire, we're a great community. And now we're getting educated. And now we're getting, we're, we're starting to see what we need to do. So for me, let me explain my vision. My vision is that we have transparency when it comes to our money. We worked for it. We deserve to know where it's at. And when we have transparency and we have taken care of our priorities with common sense spending, I eventually want to see our city develop, and I want to develop along the river. I mean, why do we not have businesses along the river? Why are we not changing the incentives to target small businesses? I see pontoon candlelight dinners floating down the river. I see docking stations that will pick up at Cowtown and move you over to Century 2. Why can we not do that? I truly believe with all my heart that if we expose our money, if we apply it using common sense, put our priorities in order, that we can obtain those things. And when we do things like citywide internet, what better way to keep our young, educated professionals right here at home? That's something that no one has talked about, yet technology has consumed us. So what we need is we need to be transparent, accountable, use common sense, and we can bring our city back to life. We can support our entrepreneurs, our small businesses, something that I struggled with getting 14 years ago, and we can actually help them grow. And guess what happens? When you help small businesses grow, they create jobs. Thanks. Thank you. Now we get to the second portion of our forum tonight. Each candidate will be asked a specific question and we'll have one minute to answer now. No rebuttal to a candidate's response will be allowed. If you do have a rebuttal, uh, you will have an opportunity to rebut during the closing remarks and you will get two minutes for your closing remarks. Okay, so the first question is for Dan Heflin. What would you do as mayor to address the public, by the way, these first uh, 10 questions are tied to the recent sales tax initiative that failed. I should preface it with that. So the first question is for Mr. Heflin. What would you do as mayor to address the public transportation needs of the city? Well, I've uh, written a little bit on my Facebook page and you can get a little bit more information on that if you look at uh, Heflin for Wichita. But I'm going to go through those real quickly. First thing I would do is take a portion of the day that the ridership is the lowest and make it free. If you make it free, people will start to use it. If people start to use it, they'll use it more often. If they get used to using it, they'll use it a lot. That's the first thing. The second, I would put a uh, app available 
so that people could track where the bus is and meet the bus when it gets there instead of standing out in the cold or the hot or the wet and not knowing where the bus is to meet them. So they would have it available to them as soon as they get there, bang on the bus and off on your way. And third, I'd have a frequent rider program. And after 10 rides, you get another ride free. That encourages them to ride more and more and more and make it more successful. We make the, the riding system more available so we use it. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Heflin. The next question is for Jeff Longwell, and it is, how do you propose keeping city infrastructure up to date and in good repair? We have been focusing on um, a number of different ways to bring more dollars together so that we can have the money to, for needed repairs. I chaired the Wichita Area Metropolitan Planning Organization for two years. That organization receives, receives state and federal dollars that we can then guide down to the local level for much needed repairs. We built a new bridge over the big ditch that was needed probably 20 years ago. We paid for it without raising taxes, utilizing the countywide sales tax that's been in place that has been earmarked just for Kellogg over the last 30 years, and we're looking at different ways to use that. We have balanced our budget by making government more efficient. Starting in 2016, that's going to give us $2 million more to put in uh, street repair. And then what we've been doing for about the last year and a half is our uh, public works department has been experimenting with new treatments to look at what kind of treatment will work better, last longer, and fix our streets more efficiently. Thank you, Mr. Longwell. The next question is for Tracy Stewart, and it is, what can the city do to solve the long-term water source problem? That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> The city has a few proposals and a few options. Um, none of them are good. <laughs> we can work on taking water out of the river, which I think is one of the proposals, taking millions of gallons of water out of the river. I used to live in a house along the river, and there, are, there were lots of times while one of the dams was under construction, that the river was pretty much empty anyway. So that water source may not be enough, and we need to continue to look for other options. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. The next question is for Sam Williams. How do you think the city can market itself to attract conventions and other events? The, wow, you loaded one that for me there. Did you tee that for, for me, Susan? <laughs> um, <laughs> for marketing something, first of all, you have to understand who you are and what you have to sell. And then compare that to what you want to sell. I think Wichita struggles with knowing what it is. Each one of us has a, an individual idea. Um, the process is in place to make sure that we know who we are. And then we have to have a clear vision of what we are and then close the gap between those by having a strategy to close that gap and identify who we are. For example, if we say we want to be the best place in America to have a convention for cowboy boot salesmen, then we come up with a sales, uh, with a strategy on how we're going to do that, and then we enroll all of us in that song that we're all going to sing together to make sure that everybody that comes to Wichita for that cowboy boot convention is going to be pleased to be in Wichita and we're singing all out of the same song. We've songbook. We've never done that in Wichita and I think we can. Thank you. Next question is for Sean Hatfield and it is how can the city attract new business to Wichita? Well the first thing we can do to attract new business to Wichita is elect a serious young professional as mayor. <laughs> The future of Wichita really is young, innovative business. It doesn't work, and we have seen that it doesn't work, Handing, uh, giving out incentives and other fleeting handouts to large corporations that come to Wichita, are here for a while, going, 
and leave when a bigger and better deal come along. The future for Wichita is focusing on younger companies, young, innovative companies in great numbers, great numbers that will come to Wichita and take advantage of an uh, economic environment with a predictable regulatory scheme, uh, and that can flourish here in greater numbers on their own. That's the ticket. Thank you, Mr. Hatfield. Next question is for Jennifer Wynn. What are your priorities in funding the city budget due to the current economic conditions? Well, again, the priorities are transparency. Right now, we have contracts that are given to certain organizations that are funding construction-related projects, and those contracts have been made exempt from a Kansas Open Records Act request. So we as taxpayers are not understanding or getting to see where is our money? Where did it go? And that is something that we must capture because I'm not handing over my checkbook and telling a stranger, here you go, here's my, here's my paycheck, just tell me it's gonna be okay and I'll go on down the road. It doesn't work that way, guys. We need accountability with our money. And when we have accountability with our money, we begin to develop our city. We begin to create jobs by supporting small businesses. And the way that we do that is we change the mandates. Right now, any and all incentives go to big business. That's it. We don't, that's it. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Wynn. The next question is for Levanta Williams. And it is, what is your position on building a new city library? Thank you, Susan. <laughs> of course, I've stated many, many times that I am looking toward the future. The present library has served us very, very well uh, during its first, uh, its, its years. But it's time for something different. It's time for us to leave that next generation a library that is going to be known not as just a library because it'll be so much more than a library. It's a resource center. It's, an, it's a technology center. It is uh, so many other things than just a library. So I am very supportive of a brand new library, but I want to make sure that we are reaching out to, again, my millennials, my, my high school students, my middle school students to find out, is this the type of library that you see for the future? Is this going to have room and space for your creation? Activity and innovation. So our young people have to make decisions as well as, uh, Sam called us dinosaurs, so we have to have their input as well. I love the library, a new one. Thank you, Ms. Williams. Um, next question is for Robert Culver, and it is whether or not you support raising taxes. Do you have any ideas on how to raise additional revenue to meet the city's needs? I do not support raising sales tax or any taxes. The reason why, one of the reason, well, let me restart. I do not support taxes, raising taxes. Um, one way we can raise revenue is I was asked on a questionnaire, do I support city-ran gambling and fundraising? I said yes. A million dollar industry that would bring us anywhere from 3.5 to almost $10 million a year in revenue. I support a raffle, a city ran raffle to raffle off properties that the city owns that's not being used. In Kansas alone, we'll raise a little over $100 million. If put out throughout the United States, we'll raise billions. We do not have to raise taxes to bring money to this state, the city. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Culver. Again, all of these questions are tied to the recent sales tax initiative that recently failed. So our next question is for Francis Jackson. And it is, what is your philosophy about lobbying for tax dollars from state and federal governments? Well, if we put it in terms of, do you want a grant to come back here after we've already paid those taxes? After all, we paid those taxes to state and federal entities. Why wouldn't we want to get some of it back? Now, I don't know what the ratio is now for what we get back and what we pay out, but I do know that 
if we're really serious about being innovative and we really are concerned about the best way to spend our money, then we're going to have to have time to think about it in a different way. And one of the things that I continuously bring up is with our new innovation center, our new cannabis leadership centers, and those ways that we have tried to help people understand, we can have these conversations again. We don't have to go with what the model is now. And if we can create new models, we will create even more wonderful ways of keeping business here, of being able to support those businesses, and also being able to say, we have found the state-of-the-art way to operate. So I don't have a set idea because I'm still looking for those things that will make us the best. All right, and our last question in the first section goes to Tony Rosales. And it is, what are your thoughts on the redevelopment of downtown Wichita? Well, I think uh, the redevelopment of downtown Wichita is, is a vital thing. Um, you know, I don't know many of you, if you go to travel to other cities, uh, but other cities our size, downtown, is booming every day of the week. Go outside right now, I don't think you're gonna see that. So our downtown revitalization is, 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 is key to what we need to do. You know, I've talked before about, um, you know, about things that I'd like to see different in this city. And you know, one thing I've always told people is that you go downtown, how often do you see a taxi taking you anywhere around? You don't, you know? Um, in a lot of cities you can go, you can get a taxi, take you, hey, take me over here, take me over here. Um, so downtown revitalization is key to the success of our city. I think we've made some strides in that, but I think we can get a lot better. Thank you, Mr. Rosales. Uh, now we're gonna change some questions that address the quality of life in Wichita. So these next set of 10 questions will address the quality of life here in our city. And the first uh, question goes to Dan Heflin, once again. What can the city mayor and council do to address homelessness in the city? Well, I went to a presentation on the uh, homeless task force that the uh, police department put together. And they're doing a really good job, but they're really understaffed. And they've got three guys that address the entire city worth of the homelessness. Um, one of the things we do do is measure the uh, number of homeless, but we only do it once a year in the winter. I think we're only required to do it for HUD uh, every two years. I would like to increase that to at least twice a year and maybe even more to really get a grip on how many of the people that are here are homeless here, are transient, coming in and out of the city, and also to uh, improve their lot in life so we could help them if they know what the, the resources they needed because they know what the real true number is. Then we can address what resources we have to offer those people. And that the, what they're doing with them now is, is finding out what their problems are and addressing those individually, and that helps a lot. Thank you, Mr. Heflin. Our next question is for Jeff Longwell. How will you balance the trade-off of recreational parks, public use of land, to economic business development of land? Well, I, I've said before that I think if we can focus on quality of life, it can help us grow our local economy. I, I had the pleasure of serving on the May School Board for 12 years where we doubled our students from 3,000 to 6,000, spent more money on every building in there, had the best technology and paid our teachers very well where we became one of the premier school districts and we did it uh, by growing, not by adding taxes. We, we did it because uh, at the same time that that growth was happening, we were able to lower our mill levy every year. We are taking on some new initiatives in this city. We have a new destination park that we're building right now that sets at about 96 in Hoover. We have a Buffalo Park that we're getting ready to put a million dollars into. I am a strong believer that quality of life makes a difference in this community and it will help us develop a more robust economy. Thank you, Mr. Longwell. The next question is for Robert Culver and it is, what measures would you support to protect the environment in the city, such as air quality and pollution in the river? 
I would support um, greener buses. Ones that run off natural gas, they don't put out any pollution. I would support more growth in foliage, trees, will help clean, keep the air clean. I would recommend that people would fill their gas tanks up at night because it's actually causes less of a pollution in the air than it does during the day. I haven't figured out how it does it, but according to all the experts, it does. But I would support it. We need to realize that cities like Los Angeles are so polluted, it's because of all the buses and vehicles and the way they operate, coal mines and stuff. Stay with nuclear power. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Uh, the next question is for Tracy Stewart. And it is, what is the city's role in the treatment of the mentally ill? I think the city has a, has a role to play. The city needs to support uh, the services that, that our uh, mentally ill citizens need. A lot of those services fall on the, on the shoulders of charitable organizations and the families of those people. Uh, but the city does have a role in providing necessary services to uh, anybody who needs them. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you League of Women Voters, you know how to questions. You know how to formulate questions, don't you? All right, the next question is for Levanta Williams, and it is, what sort of plan should the city have in place to address a breakout of a dangerous health epidemic or an emergency? I think that we need to be mindful of of training every single every single year for any kind of a breakout. Um, for instance, in, in our schools, you have fire drills, you practice, you understand what's to be done. And I think that the city and the county need to do those same things. If we are looking at an emergency situation, we should have something as a fire drill uh, at least once a year. We should be able to understand who is in the forefront, who is the speaker if something happens, um, that where should we go if something happens. But right now our training is, is limited and I think the training is what is needed. Um, as far as a disease or an illness is concerned, I think we rely very heavily with our Sedgwick County Health Department in helping us to understand what needs to be done. But there again, I don't think that we should wait until an emergency situation comes up before we put a plan in place. Our next question is for Jennifer Wynn, and it is, how can the city council work more effectively with other government agencies and entities, for example, city county uh, cooperation? Well, I think that that's, that's going to be a communication factor. We don't communicate very well right now. Um, as elected officials, in fact, I find it somewhat disturbing that uh, the lack of communication with taxpayers as well as other officials um, is not what it should be. Once a quarter, once a month, meeting with the county officials, um, being on the city council or the mayor, to me isn't enough. I mean, we're a large city, so communication, I mean, when I, when I operate my business, I have to operate by communicating. I can't just walk out the door and I'll see you in three months. It doesn't work that way. We have a lot of issues that have been far too long suppressed and ignored, and we need to address those. And the way that we're going to address those with other elected officials in our community, be it city or county, is open and honest communication. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. Our next question is for Francis Jackson. If elected as mayor, how would you resolve conflict, for example, working with other city council members? I think I'd call Kobach or Brownback to come help us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Sometimes people that you least suspect can be helpful show up 
and turn things around. Now, some of the names I just mentioned may not be the direction we want to go, but I think uh, the whole thing of, of resolving issues that make people so anxious has to do with the fear that's uh, suggested by the way we talk and the way we accept each other's opinions and the way that we um, begin to feel as though what we have to say or what can be part of our experience is not acceptable or is not uh, properly presented. So how would I do it? I don't know the specifics, but I've had a lot of experience with that, being the oldest of 13. And so uh, I think there are ways. Thank you, Mrs. Jackson, Ms. Jackson. Uh, our next question is for Sean Hatfield. And it is, in light of the budget cuts to education, what are the ways, as a community, that we can support our school system? I am so excited about these questions. Uh, part of my practice as an attorney, uh, I handle every truancy case that is filed in Sedgwick County. I represent those children as a guardian ad litem. And one of the great functions that we have, one of the great programs that just recently started in Sedgwick County is the Citizen Review Board. Unfortunately, the funding is only there for West Feeder School. Uh, but it is a group made up of citizens from the community who are willing to work with families, work with these kids who are struggling with truancy, and provide them with the resources necessary to combat and overcome the truancy issue. And they do it all if they successfully do it through that tru truancy program and don't come back to school. It's an outstanding, outstanding program that needs to be broadened citywide. And the mayor can do a lot to work with the school district. They're not connected, but they can work together to make Wichita better for education. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hatfield. Our next question is for Sam Williams, and it is, how should the city support local museums such as Exploration Place and Cowtown? The, this is gonna be honest. Um, folks in the room here, we need to help our kids understand the importance of having these uh, type of amenities in our community and have them go to them and visit them and be a part of them. And as we do that, they become more viable and it becomes, they, they be, they're, not, they're never gonna support themselves completely. But as we ask for community support, then it becomes more realizable, realizable because people see we're using them and the kids love them. Our zoo, for example, everybody loves a zoo. We need to do the same thing with the art museum. Everybody loves the art museum. In our ethnic communities, we need to have the same thing for, for the art that exists in there. Creating the love in our children so they participate, so it creates a need, so that we can have the community support we need to fund those kinds of things. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Our last question for this section is for Tony Rosales. And it is, will you continue to work on recycling and trash issues for the city? Uh, it's kind of funny I get this question. Um, I co-own and operate a restaurant, and today uh, we actually had a, a thing that's called an EcoSure audit. And EcoSure goes over every uh, facet of your restaurant you can imagine. But one of the questions asked, this lady who did our audits from Minnesota, and she said, why don't you have a recycling bin for your boxes? And I told her, you know what? It almost costs us more to recycle than it does to throw away our trash. That's something that needs to be fixed. We need to look at that. Um, you know, right now, it's a great thing to recycle, but a lot of people, are, it's hurting their wallets because of how much it costs them to recycle. Um, so definitely it's something that we need to work on um, in the city. Um, and it's something that we need to make sure that we, we can help um, the environment out by recycling, but try to reduce those costs um, for every homeowner to be able to recycle um, and not have it hurt them in the pockets. Thank you. I'd now like to ask uh, the league if they could collect some of the questions from the audience and we could bring them up here and do we, we do have time for some questions from the audience. If you could pass them down to the center of the aisle, we will take these questions and ask them of our candidates. While they're collecting those, I want to remind the candidates about the closing remarks, which will be after the audience questions. Each candidate were, is going to have two minutes for closing remarks, and you may want to address issues that have come up 
during the conversation here, during the forum tonight, you may want to rebut another candidate's uh, message. And um, two minutes for those closing remarks. And we are now collecting the questions from the audience. We appreciate the audience being here tonight. Uh, we're very, very happy, the League of Women Voters and Women for Kansas, very happy that we've almost filled the room here tonight. And we want to thank everybody who is watching our live stream on cake.com. I feel just by the last hour or so that Wichita is very lucky to have 10 amazing candidates for mayor here. And a lot of people are saying, 10 candidates, wow. You know, how are we gonna get to all those candidates? We are very lucky to have the quality of candidates that we do for this election. Once again, the primary is a week from today. At that time, the mayor's race will be whittled down to two candidates. We wanna remind everybody who is here in the audience and everybody who is watching us on cake.com to exercise your right to vote in a week. Once again, the uh, primary election is March 3rd, a week from today. So maybe a week from tonight, at this time, we will know which two candidates will go on to the general election. We have 11 questions. 11 questions, and we have time for all of them? Let me know. Let me know if we don't. Uh, okay. So I believe each candidate will have 30 seconds to answer each question. What are your plans for the aquifer recharge project? Once again, this is a question from the audience. Uh, let's see, should we start in alphabetical order? Mr. Culver? My plans for the aquifer is that we could build another pump station and basin where the big ditch meets the river. When it rains, it fills up with over 250 million gallons of water, which can be collected and transferred. When it's not full, we can do the same thing as phase one and pump 30 million gallons a day out of the river. This will help eliminate the need to find a different source of water, or it could help us find a way. Thank you. Thank you. The, the most important part of the mayor's office is, is leadership. Real leadership is the ability to put the right people, the right minds in place to solve a problem. The mayor is the one who establishes task forces and uh, can put the right people together to come up with the right plan and we'll think broadly and outside the box. That's the key. Outside the box, we need to look at places like Australia, who have their own water problems, uh, and have tackled it with things like the, uh, uh, the purchasing of, of water rights. Let's think outside the box. Let's look at other communities that struggle with water issues and take it from there. Okay, I apologize. They're supposed to answer a different question. I just got I just got word from the League of Women Voters that they're each supposed to answer a different question. So um, your question, <laughs> Mr. Heflin, is what is your position on city ordinances limiting firearm use? The next question, Ms. Jackson, is what is your position on raising the minimum wage in the city similar to San Francisco? Well, the number of people that feel the fear of not being able to care for themselves and their children 
the number of people who feel as though that entry level job is their job, whether they're 18 or 57, maybe 75, I don't know. But the problem is, if, if we can't figure out that ratio in a way that makes people feel as though they're comfortable with doing those things that the community expects of them, then you can't move, move forward with people who feel um, accepted in their community. Thank you. Um, our next question is specifically for Sam Williams, and I'm just going to read it <laughs> word for word. Um, the question looks like it's about 30 seconds in and of itself, but I will try to edit it. Uh, despite the argument that the deliberate misuse, and this is from the audience, the deliberate misuse of CPA on your campaign mailers will be forgiven as political speech, this audience member would like to hear why the Wichita Eagle endorsement of Mr. Williams stated that you are a certified public accountant when you haven't been a practicing CPA for 25 years and never in Kansas. As you know, claiming to be a CPA when you are not violates the state CPA statute. And I'll stop there. As uh, I have said in several uh, public uh, venues, I am not a licensed CPA and I've said that. And I believe what, what the Eagles said was they were talking about my qualifications. Uh, is there anyone out here who would like to sit for the exam and pass it as I did? Is there anyone out here who would like to have a license? When I moved to Kansas, I did not um, read, I did not keep the license current, but the body of knowledge and everything that I've done for the last 40 years of my life has been living for the ethics and the continuing education of being a CPA. And as a political, uh, in my effort to show my qualifications, I showed that I had the CPA qualifications. Thank you. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you for that, but I'm happy to answer it. I, I am a CPA, so. Okay, uh, I guess we'll go in order now. So it's for Mr. Longwell. How do you feel about, by the way, the league just said uh, they apologize for that question and that it should have been pulled. We've got, we've got some audience members who disagree, and that's, that's duly noted. Uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't take uh, just random questions from the audience. They have to be on card. But duly noted that some in the audience disagree with the league saying that question should have been pulled. Now, the next question is for Jeff Longwell. How do you feel about rehabilitation programs for past offenders uh, re-entering the workforce? I would have been better at the ASR question. <laughs> <laughs> um, certainly everybody deserves a second chance, and we understand that uh, people want to have a meaningful life, and if, if we're going to encourage people um, and carry a higher, uh, a better recidivism rate, then we need to give people a chance to redeem themselves. We need to have programs that focus on training so that everyone has an opportunity to be a productive citizen and, and it will make our entire community a better place. Thank you, Mr. Longwell. Our next question will be for uh, Mr. Rosales. Okay, this is pretty simple. Will you represent big money or the rest of us? <laughs> well, pretty simple answer, you. <laughs> you. You know, if you look at the organizational chart um, of the city government of Wichita, you know who's at the top? Not the mayor. The citizens of Wichita are at the top. That's who you represent. Um, so that's who you go for, and that's who you work for. Um, I will be working for you. You will not be working for me. Um, more importantly, we will be working together. Thank you, Mr. Rosales. Uh, Mr. Stewart, how will you address the lack of accountability concerning police shootings in Wichita? I think the police relationship with the community is something that, that definitely needs to be addressed. The police need to be a part of the community, get out there and, and 
play in the street with the kids when, when the kids are outside playing, play in the parks. The police are citizens as well. They are part of our community and they want to be, they want our community to be successful. There needs to be some transparency. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Williams, Levanta Williams. Right now, city council meetings are during the day. Most members of society can't make the meetings. And I've been to a lot of cities where the meetings are in the evening or at night. Uh, would you change the time so that everyone has an equal chance to attend? I think that's a good question, um, but it would also have to be one where we look at the rest of the city council to see what their schedules are. I think that there could be, and already we have meetings that are in our city halls that are in the evenings, and I think that our council members could definitely go to the city halls in the neighborhood for some of their meetings. Um, but I, I would think that at least uh, every so often we would be able to have those meetings in the evening. It does present um, a, a hardship to some of the council members uh, as well as some of the community members. Okay. But it's doable. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Williams, what is your position on the ballot issue regarding marijuana? Uh. <laughs> I believe that that is a state issue. Um, had I been in the position, I would have uh, been honest with the, the folks. Everybody has a right to petition, but I would have been honest with the group doing it and said, uh, look, we're not gonna spend city resources to fight this if it goes to the state and they turn it down. And it, I would it, encourage you to take that issue to the state where it belongs. Okay, and Ms. Wynn. What would you do to help small businesses start and or grow? I wanted to answer like all of those questions, <laughs> but um, I mean, it really comes down to the development of our city and reorganizing and like I've talked about before, restructuring uh, the support and the help, bringing education to small business owners. When I started my business, it was not, it was not easy. Um, I was in a, in a, you know, I was putting sprinkler systems in, guys. That's what I did, and I dug trenches, and, and I did that for four years. And when I reached out for help, they would say, oh, yeah, we can, oh, that is so short. <laughs> so, yeah, we need, to, we need to help educate and support our small businesses. Thank you, Ms. Wynn. Um, I need some direction from the League of Women Voters. I, before we ask the last question or, or they get the chance to give their closing remarks, would you like me to open it up for each candidate to rebut one question, or would you like to go to closing remarks? Okay, all right, okay. So we're gonna start with closing remarks now, and you get two minutes for closing remarks, and during those closing remarks, you can rebut uh, any answer that you heard here tonight. And so we're gonna go the opposite end of the alphabet, so we're going to start with Jennifer Wynn. Well, first and foremost, I want you to understand something, that as a common working class individual, this is not easy. Um, stepping into this arena has been a shock, uh, to say the least. And um, I'm not represented by big corporation. I'm not represented by small, or I'm sorry, special interest groups. I'm represented just by people, because my goal and my function is here to represent the people's voice because I am one of you and we've been suppressed for far too long. I wanna be transparent, accountable, probably more than what most people are gonna be comfortable with, but that's what it's gonna take. Because the reality is, I'm done with the backdoor deals. I'm done with me going to work, working for my paycheck, you working for your paycheck, and then our money just seems to dwindle and disappear, and nobody's accountable for that. That is unacceptable. We do need to expand on the ASR project. Um, you know, one of the things that we talked about was giving second chances, but yet our city is not doing that. So one of the things that we need to look at is revitalizing. I cannot even send offenders that I'm trying to give a second chance to to go mow the grass because the city council changed that three months ago and said they're no longer able to mow the grass that they can walk on 
if they're out in their own time, but they can't do it working for me. So we're not doing the things that we need to be doing to help our citizens get back up on their feet, support small businesses, and truly, truly have somebody that it's elected that's going to listen to the majority of the people. I'm not here to push my beliefs or my ideology on you. That's not what elected officials are meant to do, even though that's what we get. That's not what they're meant to do. So what I'm doing, I'm doing for the right reasons, and I need your support on March 3rd. I need you to call people and let them know because we don't have thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions. We have normal working people supporting us, so please get out and vote on March 3rd for Jennifer Wynn. <laughs> Sam Williams, two minutes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, first of all, I, I want to to apologize to anyone in, in this room here who may have uh, may have felt that I uh, am misusing my credentials because that's not my intent and, and never was. Yeah, when you run for public offices, I found out, and I've never done this before, um, you list the things that you think you bring to the table. And having learned the discipline uh, of being a certified public accountant, passing the test and living the ethics and doing the continuing education for 40 years, it, it, it gives you a body of knowledge that I think the city can use greatly. And that was my intent. It was never uh, the intent to do your taxes or to attest to your financial statement. Um, I am very grateful for this opportunity. Um, you know, I spoke of potential a few minutes ago, and I really mean it. I love this city. I've learned to love it with a passion. We are great, and we are outstanding. But in the last 10 years, we've had a tremendous recession hit our city. And we need to change now. We need to have a vision. We need to have the ability to create uh, a, an interest in our EPI structure and take care of our tax dollars so that we take care of the things in the city that we should be doing in an excellent way. We need to create the environment where jobs are created. We need to create the environment where our children want to stay. You know, Marilyn and I raised six children in Wichita. We put four children through, uh, and four of our children still live here in Wichita. And all nine, grand, uh, nine of our grandchildren live here. And many of us in here have seen some of our kids and our great our ch grandchildren, our great grandchildren live, leave this town. I believe that in the next four years we're going to turn that around. And I ask for your support. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Levanta Williams. First of all, let me say thank you for being here and to listen to some of the, the comments that we have to say. Uh, I also want to say that I feel that I'm a very honest person. I, I feel that I have the character that I um, expect to see in, in every one of us. Um, so I, I want to go off by saying I feel that I am an honest person. You know, we're not all going to agree on everything. That just doesn't happen. That w we would be doing that in a, in a make-believe world. But it takes all of us working together for the good of everything that we do. And so we all have to try to be on the same page. I'm a retired educator, but I never retired my commitment to building a strong environment that encourages our young people to grow and to thrive. In the next four years, or eight years even, as mayor, I want to see the city of Wichita as a partner with USD 259 and all of the other colleges that are here because again, those schools contain the workforce that we need in order to move forward. If we have young people that are not reading on third grade level, they're not gonna be reading on grade level in the 12th grade. We cannot continue to let our young people uh, leave school at an earlier age. It takes a village to raise a child. Wichita has got to become that village in order for us to create the workforce that we need. We need those 20 to 25 year olds to stay here in Wichita. It's up to us as city leaders to reach out to those young people in college and ask them, is there a way? Is there something that we have not done? Is there something that Wichita needs to be doing differently in order for you to stay here? That is how we grow our community. We grow our community by talking with the people and that is very important. Thank you for being here, thank you. Tracy Stewart. 
Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you for uh, watching on cake.com. I'm very humbled and honored to be up here um, amongst this group of candidates. This is a, a this is not easy, and, it, and it's definitely a learning experience for some of us who've never run for office before. I think the city needs to have some new leadership, some fresh blood. Um, there have been times in, in our city's recent history when job creation incentives have been given to companies who destroy jobs instead of create them. Um, when a company is creating jobs in one department and laying off jobs in every other department, they're not creating jobs. When a company gets job creation incentives and then files for bankruptcy and lays people off and cuts benefits, they're not creating jobs. I think a better idea for job creation would be whatever our budget is, whatever we decide should be given out for job creation incentives, every company, small and large, in the city of Wichita should be eligible for those benefits. You take the number of full-time employees they have at, on December 31st, minus the number of full-time employees they had January 1st, that's the number of jobs they created, and that's what the incentive should be based on. I'm running because I want a government that I can trust. I want a government that, that responds to the people and will do the right thing, and Wichita is a great community. I want to serve and see if I can make it any better. Thank you. Tony Rosales. Thank you to the Women's League of Voters for having us tonight. I appreciate it. Um, for all you guys for coming out, uh, Susan, thank you for moderating as well. Um, you know, one thing, uh, this is I think our fourth or fifth forum, and the biggest thing that I love is I'm encouraged by the thoughts that everybody has up here. There's some great thoughts, um, you know, and, and that's a, a vital to our, our survival and, our, and building our city is, is ideas. And, uh, you know, if you go to any relationship course that you have, they're going to tell you the number one thing in relationships is listening. And a relationship between a mayor and a city is just that, it's listening. you got to listen to what your citizens want. People ask me, you know, why are you running for mayor? You're in restaurants. I'll tell you, I'm the best part of it is I do business and people. Business aspect, I know how to make and operate a successful budget, work with a need versus want mentality, and I get to see people every day. I get to employ people every day. I get to visit with people every day. You know, every class, I get to see them. Um, you know, so that's what would make me great. Um, a couple things real quick. You know, when you go out to vote um, on March 3rd, it's important that you cast your vote in someone that you believe in, someone that you believe will make this city better for you. But you know what, more importantly, and equally as important, is that you need someone that believes in you. Thank you. Jeff Longwell. Susan, thank you for taking time away from your family tonight and being part of this. I want to thank the women for Kansas. I'd like to see you add a tagline soon, women for Longwell, but we'll work on that. <laughs> um, my wife and I have raised three wonderful children, three very successful children in this community that we couldn't be more proud of. This position isn't one that I think you just wake up one day and you decide that I want to be the next mayor. I think it's one that deserves proven leadership and someone that has a vision to move our city forward. I certainly have paid my dues. I have ran a small company that, that helped build from five employees to 75 employees. I have spent time in public office trying to make Wichita a better place. I have chaired various committees. I was the chair of the Wichita Area Metropolitan Planning Organization. There is an organization called the Chief Elected Officials Board, and they provide oversight for federal funds that get handed down to uh, Workforce Alliance Center. It's no longer a Chief Elected Officials Board. It is one person, and that person has been me for the last four years. And so I, I, I have been overseeing how our federal funds are spent in the workforce and how we can make our workforce a better place. I think we need to build confidence with the voters in this community. My record certainly is an open book. I have shown you that I have the ability to wisely spend your tax dollars. We have made government more efficient. We have balanced our budget every year. 
We have put money away in emergency reserves, and we haven't raised your taxes. My, again, my leadership is an open book. You can go and look at my nearly 20-year record of being in public office. I would love to have your support on, on March 3rd to be your next mayor. Francis Jackson. I decided since it's the last time around, I'll send Skinny out of this chair. <laughs> you know, one of the things that comes with maturity is that when you do something early in your life and you have time to watch and, and, and observe to see what has taken place, I'll tell you one thing I would have done differently. I served, and some of you know a woman by the name of Gloria Bonwell, we served on uh, the committee that actually wrote the industrial, industrial revenue bonds. Now the thing I would have done differently is when we asked those companies or when they asked us if they could come in, whatever it turned out to be, I would have said, yeah, you can come but you have to have a daycare center there where your people can have a way of being involved without feeling that everything around them is falling apart when they've got to go find somebody to babysit and that they, in the end, they probably just get a fourth of their salary because you know how expensive babysitting is, so, but didn't do that. But you know, you still have opportunities to try things. And one of the things that I think that would have um, helped us at that time is if we had been open to this whole thing of innovation, reaching out. So I'm really impressed by the idea that we now have the opportunity to think in terms of not just ourselves, not just the people we've always listened to, not just the political battle that's gone on forever and ever, but we now can figure out, we can invite people in. And it's just like transportation. Transportation probably isn't just Sedgwick County if we're gonna make it work. It's just like water. Water probably isn't just Cedric County if we're gonna make that work. And neither is it true that we're going to be able to change our communities without um, finding some way for us to have community policing again. And I look at those young policemen and I think, and they're the front line for our mental health uh, uh, issues. So we've got to come together and have these conversations again about how it is we can be more efficient, that we can be, that we can, uh, the things that we do for the community are sustainable, and one more time, look forward to the beloved community. Dan Heflin. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for this great facility. I uh, want to start out with the uh, ASR question that I didn't get to answer. <laughs> um, if you had the perfect ASR, you would put it right at the bottom of the lake. We have a lake not too far from our uh, aquifer, and that would be a great way to take the, the water in high times. And we get more use out of our ASR right now. We only get maybe a week or two at the most if the uh, river floods to get any water into it. This way we're spending for the uh, greater part of the year, almost the entire year. That's the uh, one thing I want to get to. The others, I've been uh, part of this community for many years, and I've tried to do the best thing I can do. Recently, I've had the opportunity to save a couple lives. Um, one guy came to me, he was a felon. He had uh, come out of federal prison, and it's near and dear to my heart to what I've done for this gentleman. He uh, came out, and now at the A&T school, and he's become a mechanic. And that's because of my inspiration and that I've given him. And I'm so proud of that opportunity, and I'd like to extend that to many more people and show other people how you give a person a second chance and they can give you the world. That's the, uh, the, the good feeling part of what I want to do. The other thing is the technical. I'm a technical person. A lot of the problems we have are technical problems. And I can see the answers to them when the others are not. And I have a feeling for those things. And I know when somebody comes here as an expert trying to sell you a product, when all you really want is a solution, not their product. And I can get to that answer. And I can be that person that will guide this city into greatness that we really richly deserve. Thank you very much. Sean Hatfield. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to be here this evening. My name is Sean Hatfield, and I am proud to call Wichita my home. 
Wichita is where my wife Maggie and I have started our professional careers. This is where she and I want to have kids someday. This is where we want our family to be, where we want our family to come. And like each and every one of you in this room tonight, we are invested in Wichita. And just like each and every one of you, I want Wichita to do better. I want to root out the graft and the backroom deals and the handouts to crony city insiders and start focusing on growing Wichita the right way. And just like each and every one of you, I want Wichita to be an exceptional city, to live and to grow and to do business and to raise a family. But we can't do that until we have new leadership. No longer can we rely on the same tired candidates and the same recycled policies that we're forced to choose from election after election and have left Wichita in a rut for decades. I will use my experience as an attorney and a city prosecutor to root out those backroom deals, those handouts, the graft that have embarrassed our city and wasted our tax dollars for far too long. You've heard a lot from many different candidates up here tonight about the importance of young business leaders, young entrepreneurs, young professionals, and the importance of bringing in that new generation to Wichita. My friends, I'm here to tell you the new generation of leadership is here, and I'm asking for your vote on March 3rd. Thank you so much. And last, Robert Culver. The definition of a strong leader is not how much money you have, or what your educational background is, or the ethnic group you come from, or who do you know, or your name. A strong leader is defined by loyalty, honesty, reliability, trustworthy, transparency, accountable, listening to the people of Wichita, taking their ideas to heart. I believe in it we should form a committee, but not a committee of the brightest, because it's not the brightest that knows what's best for the city. It's the people that live and work in Wichita. I don't agree with the fact that taxes don't get risen in this city. The problem is the county raised this tax 1% for the arena. It was promised to come off this year. There is no word about when it's going to come off. I don't think the one cent tax would have passed in the first place by the way it was bundled. It might have passed if we were back down to 6.3%, where we were. When we were at 6.3%, this city was thriving. Businesses stayed. People spent money. The economy grew. We had the city council saying we don't outsource jobs, but yet all the statues on Douglas were outsourced, commissioned by an artist out of Puget Sound, Washington. Were they afraid or did they not have enough courage or uh, I'm lost the thought. <laughs> <laughs> um, did they not think any of our artists were capable of doing the same thing? They talk a big game, but they're giving you political words. They're doing what they're trained to do as politicians. I know, granted, not all of them are politicians, but if you want honesty, please vote for me March 3rd. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, this concludes this session of our candidate forum. Thank you to the candidates for your participation. and. <laughs> Really, for every forum that the mayor's race has had in the past uh, couple of weeks, we thank you and we appreciate the difficulty that you have when there are nine other candidates and you have to uh, put your answers in one minute, 30 seconds, and two minutes. And so we appreciate that and we appreciate how difficult it is to have a forum with nine other candidates, 10 candidates all together. We also want to thank the audience for coming out tonight. 
We want to thank you all who are watching on cake.com. We want to thank you because you want to be informed come next week, and we appreciate that, an informed voter. We want to thank the audience for the questions they submitted tonight. Candidate literature, by the way, is available to all of you outside in the foyer to pick up for on the tables in the hallway. And candidates will also be available to meet and greet audience members in the foyer as well. Thank you all for being here. Once again, a reminder, vote next Tuesday, one week from today. March 3rd is the primary. It may be a tough choice as to who to vote for out of all these 10 candidates. It's not going to be an easy one. But we encourage you, the League and Women for Kansas encourages you all to get out and vote next Tuesday, March 3rd. Thank you, God bless you, and good night. Thanks, guys. I don't see how you got What a terrific gosh. job you did. Oh, oh my gosh, it's like, exhausting. I, no, that's all that. I, I'm sorry about that. It's all right. It didn't matter. It just didn't matter. Don't worry well, about I it. Think it's, it's, I think it's good. Well, maybe. I, I didn't, I didn't really <laughs> I realize that. that. It's some yeah. legal. I mean, we're, I'm not part of the league, so I didn't know it didn't No, I think it's good. But you did terrific. Thank you. Thank you. She was sensational. Thank you. 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 It was two and a half. And wait, it's 830. It's an hour and a half. I know. Thank you, Sam. So nice seeing you again, and good luck to all of you. Good luck. Such a nice to meet you. I go to very St. George, Wichita. You're very popular over oh, there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, all my Lebanese pies are. Absolutely. <laughs>